The MCF Times 2 is a dual three pole state variable filter with simultaneous low pass, band pass or notch, and high pass outputs. It features two switches, link and feed, that allow the filters to function as one, connecting the control and audio paths respectively for both serial and parallel uses. Stereo operation, dual peak, tighter slopes and other complex filtering arrangements can be effortlessly configured, making the MCF x2 an extremely flexible and interesting solution for filtering any source within a system. Let's take a closer look at its features. The MCF x2 is comprised of two identical filter cores which may function entirely independently or together via the link and feed switches. Each side includes a single input and three simultaneous outputs for low pass, band pass or notch, which is selected via the jumper at the rear of the module, and high pass. Full control over cutoff and resonance is available for each filter. Each cutoff includes two CV inputs, one calibrated for volt per octave tracking and the other with an associated attenuverter. Each resonance includes a single CV input with a unipolar attenuator. Engaging the link switch will internally connect the left cutoff control to the right, enabling simultaneous control of both filter cutoff frequencies via a single knob and CV input. Engaging the feed switch will internally route one of the left core's four filter types directly to the input of the right filter, allowing for dual filtering in series without the need to repatch. Used both in combination and separately, the link and feed switches make it quick and easy to set up any kind of dual filter configuration. We will explore some of the different arrangements later in the video. Let's listen to the different output types of a single filter swept by hand. We'll start with the low pass output and patch a saw wave from the MCO through a channel of the Tangle Quartet, then onto the MCF for pre-filter attenuation. The character of the filtering is heavily dependent on the input gain, with hotter signals adding more grit and smear. We'll start with a lower setting for a cleaner filter sound. Let's add a bit of resonance. Notice the emphasis on the harmonics as the resonance is increased. At higher resonance settings, the filter will begin to self-oscillate and with no input patched, will function as a basic sine wave oscillator. Now let's listen to the band pass output. Next, we'll listen to high pass.
Finally, we'll take a listen to the notch filter by switching the jumper on the rear of the module. Each filter has its own selection to use either the band pass or the notch filter output. The notch filter is more subtle than the other filter types, heavily attenuating a narrow region of frequency centered around the cutoff frequency. Sweeping the notch filter gives an effect similar to that of a phaser. Resonance only serves to narrow the notch and has little effect on the sound. Let's return to the low pass and increase the MCO's level at the input. Notice the character changes as the gain is increased. The sweep becomes slightly smoother and at higher resonance settings a grit and a buzz starts to emerge. Let's switch to high pass. The character of the filters is greatly altered by the input gain setting. This is good to keep in mind depending on the desired timbre. One convenient additional feature of the MCF x2 is the normalising of the left filter's input to the right. This allows for immediate parallel processing of a single input source. Let's patch the outputs in stereo for dual bandpass filters, each panned to one side. As soon as the right input is patched, the normal is broken and the signal is replaced by the new source. Using a single filter, let's patch some modulation to the CV inputs. We'll patch a basic decay envelope from Quaid to control the cutoff frequency and use the attenuverter to dial in the amount. The balance between the manual cutoff setting, a tenuverter level, and envelope time greatly impacts the character of the synth voice, ranging from smooth and warm sounds to brighter, more percussive hits. Let's patch a fast random CV from Pam to the second cutoff input to be mixed in with the modulation from Quaid's envelope. Shortening the envelope time helps make the random CV more impactful. Finally, let's patch another fast random CV from Pam to control the resonance level. Using the attenuator to dial in the amount of modulation is very helpful to keep the filter from reaching into self-oscillation. Now that we have explored the sounds of a single filter circuit, let's take a look at how the two cores can be used together. The first and most obvious use is filtering a stereo source like the Tyso Dico. Simply patching each output of the Dico through the left and right filter cores gives us dual mono with the cutoff frequencies set independently for each side. If we engage the link switch, 
we can then sweep both filters simultaneously for true stereo filtering. The left cutoff now acts as the master frequency control for both filters. The maximum range of the right filter core is set with its associated cutoff control. The filters track together when it is fully clockwise. When linked, the resonance controls still function independently. The CV inputs to the left cutoff frequency now affect both filters as well. Let's patch the Quaid Mega Slope in sequencer mode to control the cutoff. Here is some smooth triangle wave modulation from Pam. Now let's look at the feed switch. Engaging feed internally routes one of the left cores of four filter types directly to the input of the right core for serial filtering. The output type fed through is selected at the rear of the module via the center jumper. Here we have the jumper set to high pass. Let's engage the feed switch and patch the MCF x2 as if it were a single filter, with the input source going to the left core and the output coming from the right. We will patch from the low pass output of the right core, giving us an MS20 style dual filter configuration of high pass fed into low pass. This arrangement lets us create custom band pass filters with the two cutoffs setting the high and low regions of the band. Let's repatch the output and listen to high pass fed into band pass. At any time, the feed setting can be overridden by simply patching another signal into the input of the right filter. After trying feed with each of the filter types, the jumper at the rear can be set to instantly recall your favourite combination. Now that we are familiar with the functionality of the link and feed switches, let's combine them. We'll enable link to control the two cutoff frequencies together. Here is the sound of a single band pass from the right filter core. As soon as feed is engaged, the left band pass is fed to the right. The two matching filters now act like a single band pass with a steeper slope due to their perfectly matching frequencies. If we offset the range of the right filter core, we'll create a gap between the two peaks. The ratio between them stays constant as the master cutoff is swept. Increasing the resonance will start to enter format filter territory. If we repatch a saw wave to the input, we can get even closer to the sounds of a human voice. Let's modulate the cutoff frequency with Quaid's five-step sequencer. 
This is more like format modulation in a dual peak configuration like this. If we add some glide to the sequence, smooth morphing will occur between the formats, sounding even more like a speaking voice. Here is some more common envelope modulation over the frequency via the pip slope. Let's combine the stepped modulation from Quaid sequencer with the envelope by patching the bipolar out to the second frequency CV input. The resonance setting of each filter has a huge impact on the sharpness or voice-like character in a dual peak configuration. Although a dual peak configuration commonly uses two bandpass filters, any combination of filter types can be paired up. Let's listen to the sounds of a few of them. Remember the filters are in series via the feed switch and linked to be swept simultaneously. In this first patch, we have connected the mono mix output of the squid sample to the left input of the MCF x2. The right filter's input is left open so that the normal signal from the squid appears there as well. The two filters' notch outputs are hard panned left and right by the jumble hinge. If we manually sweep the notch filters, subtle shifts are introduced to the stereo field. Let's patch a pair of sine waves from PAM into the two filters cutoff CV inputs. Using steady modulation, a tame stereo phaser like effect is created. The relationship between the two notch filters is very important to the character of the sweep.
Notch filters work great for unique, subtle sweeping effects when a phaser or flanger is too heavy handed. Here we have patched the six simultaneous filter outputs to the Boss Bow 2. A random voltage from PAM addresses the Boss Bow 2, selecting one of the six different filter outputs each time it changes. Combined with modulation to the cutoff frequencies, the output switching creates complex stepped tumble changes, nicely emphasising the sequence voice of the Tyso Dico. Here we have engaged both the link and feed switches to route two bandpass filters in series. The sub outs of two detuned MCOs are mixed and patched through the filters, creating a unique sound in bass voice. Let's offset the filter peaks and adjust the resonance for each. Now we'll patch a triangle wave LFO from PAM to the second cutoff frequency CV input. In this patch we'll explore mixing different filter types in stereo using the jumble henge. Here the MCF x 2 is processing sounds generated by a Kemi's Tyco. First, let's patch some noise from the MCO to FM the two linked filters. Using an envelope from Pipslope to control the noise level, we can modulate FM in short bursts and create a snare sound. Let's offset the two filters to add some stereo width. Now we'll add the high pass outputs to the mix. Let's change the wave on MCO to sine to give the FM a cleaner sound. Finally, let's add the bandpass outputs. Patching different filter types to the left and right sides results in an interesting spectral panning effect as the cutoff is swept. In this case, a complex mix of the six filter outs further filtered by the henge inputs results in an atypical stereo and spectral image emerging.
In this final patch, we will create two different synth voices using a Chemi's Castle and the filters of the MCF x 2 patched independently. Like the previous example, let's patch all three outputs of the first chord voice to the henge to give it a stereo field. Inverted modulation from the pips load combines with the filtering to create a pseudo stereo echo. Now let's patch the second castle voice through the left filter. We'll add some modulation from the other pips load. Let's use the attenuverter on the right filter to flip the modulation from the pips load back to positive and control the cutoff in a more typical fashion. Thanks for watching this overview of the brand new MCF Times 2 dual state varial filter. For more information about the MCF Times 2 and the rest of the ALM product line, please visit busycircuits.com.